John, chapter 14, if you want to turn to it. We're going to read the first four verses of that chapter. John 14, 1 through 4. And uh, it's, it's, Christ, it's, it's about Christ talking to his disciples about his, his return. And he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And he says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare, prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. And Thomas immediately says, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Say amen. Because that's a good word. And then turn over to Acts, if you would. Chapter 1, it's really easy to find, just over a few pages. And we're going to look at the uh, first chapter of it and the ninth verse. Now notice what it says. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. Now that had, that had got to be a moment. Come on. That had got to be a moment. All of a sudden, you're out there with Jesus, and he just starts to lift off the ground, and then a cloud of glory comes and surrounds him, and up he goes. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of, Gal of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go to heaven. And I want you to be encouraged today because we're talking about signs of the times. This is probably, there is probably no subject that gets more argument or debate that when is Christ returning? I mean, all kind, there's all kinds of theories out on it. And books have been written about it. But the bottom line, he isn't come back yet. It hasn't happened yet. There is no argument, really, that he is going to return. There's no argument there. There's no argument that he's going to return. If you think his first arrival was low-key, we can't even begin to imagine his second arrival. I mean, it is going to be something different. His first arrival was hidden, born in a manger. His second arrival will be world wide and life-changing for all, regardless if they believe in him or not. They're going to be affected by him. And you may be sitting there, or people may be listening to this in the video, video you don't believe all this. Well, I'm sorry, but he's coming back. That's right. Amen. Doesn't matter if you believe it or not. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter how you believe he's coming back. It doesn't matter when you believe he's coming back. He is coming back. Take heart in that. I don't know if we'll be today. Could be. Because the signs certainly point that way. In Matthew, Jesus talks about the signs of his coming. We just want to look at a couple of them today. Would you turn with me to the book of Matthew? It's the first book of the New Testament, as you know. And it's in the 24th chapter. We're going to read one verse. One verse, Matthew 24, 3. Going to keep, we're going to use the Bible a little bit more today. So you might just keep it on your lap handy. Because we're looking at Matthew chapter 4, verse 3. And it says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? What will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? Now, let me, let me have your attention now. Signs point to a destination. They are not the destination. These are signs that are pointing somewhere. They're not the destination. It doesn't mean it's over because you see a sign. When you go to Tacoma and it says Tacoma 7 miles, 8 miles, that doesn't mean you're in Tacoma. That's a sign pointing to something. You're on a journey and you're trying to get there. If we think... If we think earth, if we think that earth trumps his heaven, you and I both 
are out of touch with his plans and purposes. If you think earth is better than heaven, trumps it, then you are missing the point. Totally missing the point. The challenge, the challenge is to believe in something. The challenge is to believe in something that no one has called back from on their cell phone. Hey, mom, we're in Rome. Hey, mom, we're in Hawaii, and boy, the weather is nice. Hey, mom, we're, we just arrived in London, and man, the weather is great. It's just amazing here. You know, you've never got a cell phone call from heaven, and you probably never will. But this is where the issue comes in. Now, I know there's been books written uh, about people who supposedly went there and saw a light, walked down a tunnel, and had all the conversations and so forth. I don't know about that. If it's not in the Bible, I don't believe it. I'm just very cautious about believing that kind of stuff. I've read about the pastor who got killed in an accident, and he went to heaven, and he talks about it. It's a very interesting book. But there's nothing you can just put your teeth on and say, that must be God, because you don't know. Because nobody has been there, and nobody has called you back. Nobody's contacted you and said, hey, this is cool up here, man. You think you got it good down there. You don't know what good is. Let, let me remind you now. Let, let me remind you that Jesus appeared on the earth with his resurrected body. He was resurrected out of the grave and he walked on this earth. He was seen. He was touched. Put my hand in your side. He was recognized. He conversed. He walked and ate with his disciples with his resurrected body. He could appear and disappear at will. Now that would be cool. When your wife tells you to put the garbage out, you disappear. When the bill collector tries to find you, you disappear. When the policeman stops you for speeding, you disappear. And he looks at the car. No, you disappear at will. And he did not lose his manhood. He was still a man after the resurrection. Now, I've heard all this thing about going to heaven and there's no giving in marriage. No, 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 be careful. No. He doesn't tell you you're sexless. We're not angels. Okay, this is an area that I, I, I'm really going to explore. He was seen. He was touched. He was recognized. He had conversation. He walked and ate with the disciples. He could appear and disappear at will. And he did not lose his manhood. Now that's a little taste of what it's like in heaven. What does, what does the future hold? Where are we on this timetable? Where, where are we? What, what, what are we looking at? What are we seeing today? I want to turn, I want you to turn to a verse that I believe that God opened up for me so that I could share it with you today. And it's in the book of Isaiah. I want you to see it now. If you've got a Bible, I want you to look at it. I want you to see it. I want you to hear what it says. Because I believe... Well, I'll get to that in a minute. Let me, let's read that verse in. Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah 46 and verse 9. Back in the Old Testament. Isaiah 46 verse 9. I want you to see it. I want you to see it in your own Bible. Mark it. Put a circle around it. Whatever you want. It says, the ninth verse of the 46th chapter of Isaiah, Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Now let me look at, look at those words. Declaring the end from the beginning. I have a map here. And I just want you to take a look at it. It's an interesting map. Because it's a map of the ancient world at the time of creation. And as you can see on the map,